Hi, everybody. So I'd like to um, wrap up this initial discussion of properties of orbits by proving this uh, relationship between the size of an orbit and the index of the stabilizer subgroup for an element of that orbit. Um, and this is the kind of basic combinatorial relationship between subgroups and orbits. So um, here's the situation. We have a group action. So we have G, the finite group. Well, we don't assume it finite. Let's just assume G is a group and X is a set and G acts on X, as we've been assuming all along. And now we're going to choose an element x in the set x and consider the map which sends g to x just by taking elements of g and applying them to that element x through the action. And the proposition says that this gives a bijection between the cosets of the stabilizer subgroup g sub x and the orbit gx. And uh, in particular, of course, if, if, the, uh, if either of these um, indices or size of the orbits are finite, then they have the same number of elements, because if you have a bijective map between two sets uh, which are finite, then they have the same number of elements. And if they're infinite, then one of them is infinite, then they're both infinite. And um, so the uh, one way to think about this is that um, we're going to, we know that, that the group G is divided up into cosets by uh, the subgroup GX. And what we're going to show is that each, maybe I'll write it this way, that if we, um, if we have two elements, so the idea is that if we have two elements, G1 and G2 are in G, and they have the property that G1X is equal to G2X, so they take X to the same place, then this happens if and only if G1 the cosets are the same. And in fact, that more or less practically is the whole proof right there, because what we see here is that if G1 takes X to the same place that G2 does, then that means that G2 inverse G1 fixes X. And that tells us that G2 inverse G1 is in the stabilizer of x, and therefore that g1 is in the coset, the same left coset as g2. Uh, and then by our usual properties of cosets, this happens if and only if g1 gx is the same coset as g2 gx. So, um, Let's, uh, let's use this, so just to recap, what we're saying here is if G1 and G2 take a point X to the same place, then G1 and G2 have to belong to the same coset. And um, conversely, if they do belong to the same coset, if G1, GX is equal to G2, GX, then that means that G2 inverse G1 is in GX, that's from our coset proposition that we've used over and over again. And that tells us that G2 inverse G1X is X, because that's what the stabilizer of X does. And therefore, we find that G1X equals G2X. So G1 and G2 take X to the same place. So that's the, uh, the idea behind proving bijectivity. So just to nail this down, um, first of all, the map G goes to GX is a surjective map from G to the orbit of X. And that's more or less by definition, because the orbit of X is exactly equal to the set g dot x as g runs through g. And that's what the image of this map g goes to g dot x is. The second thing we know from our calculation above, above is that px of g1 equals px of g2 
if and only if g1 and g2 give the same left cosine. And let's verify that, let's, so let's rewrite our map, not from elements of, group, of the group, but from cosets of the group. So we're going to define px of a coset to just be g dot x. And this map is well-defined because if you, if you used a different representative, if g1, gx equals g2, this is the same calculation we've done over and over again, that means that g2 inverse g1 is in gx, and we would get, therefore, that um, g1x is equal to g2x because, um, well, or maybe a simpler way to do this would just be to say, if this is the case, then that means that g1 is g2h for some element of the stabilizer, and therefore g1 dot x is g2 dot h dot x, but h dot x is x, so that's g2 dot x. So we've shown actually that the map from g to, to the orbit of x can really be thought of as a map from the cosets of the stabilizer to the orbit of x. And it's injective because we already know that px of g1 gx equals px of g2 gx if and only if g1x equals g2x, which is if and only if g1 gx equals g2 gx. So uh, this may seem very formal, but if you want kind of a picture here, if we think about our orbit, here's x. Here's our orbit. So here's x, g1x, g2x, g3x, and so on. And here's g. g is divided up into cosets. This is the stabilizer of x. This is g1 times the stabilizer of x. This is g2 times the stabilizer of x. And the way the picture works is that if you take any element in the coset and you apply it to x, it takes you to here. So the set of elements of g, which take x to g1x, is this coset that takes x to g2x is this coset. And so we see that the number of elements in x in the orbit is equal to the number of cosets, which is equal to the index. And of course, one corollary is that the size of the orbit, if g is finite, if g and x, well, if g is finite, then the size of the orbit of x is a divisor of the order of g, because it's the index of a subgroup, which by Lagrange's theorem is always a divisor of the order of g.